can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? Oak House Church brings to you the word of life which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen, and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter His Word. God bless you. Riyama laba laba, bo manayana, zeriyakaba. Glory be to your name. Jesus Christ, we honor you tonight. As we gather again in your presence, we come to let you know you're the reason we live and move and have our being. We come to tell you that you are God, our Lord, our Maker, our Savior, our strength, our fortress. You are exceeding great reward, Lord. In heaven there is none but you, here on earth. We long and desire you and you alone, for you reign. You reign in righteousness. Your reign is forever and ever. You reign, you reign, you reign. There is none like you. There is none that can be compared to you. What a great God. What an almighty God we serve. The greatest honor and privilege is to know you, my Father. Lord, as we come again in your presence, we look up to you that you may reveal yourself to us. Again and again, as we behold you with an open face as in a mirror, the Bible declares that we are being changed into the very image of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes again. Cause us to look beyond the veil, the hidden things, the treasures, and the mysteries of the kingdom. Thank you, wonderful Holy Spirit. Absolutely nothing we can do here without you. I humbly surrender, submit to your Lordship and ask that you speak as I stand behind and stand behind the very cross of Jesus Christ. Let Jesus Christ be glorified in our midst, in our lives, in Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. I have come to bow down at your feet, my Lord Jesus. For in your presence is fullness of joy. There is nothing, oh, yeah, there is no one to compare with you. I take pleasure in worship you. I take pleasure in worshiping, I take pleasure in worshiping you, Lord. No other name like the name of Jesus. No other name like the name of God. No other name like the name of Jesus. He
Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everybody. You're welcome to the presence of God, to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. We are not alone because we know the host of heaven is here with us. Jesus said when we come together precisely in his name. The God that cannot lie say that he is there in our midst. You may not see him. You may not have to see him with your eyes. And you don't have to see him with your eyes. But he is here. Seeing him with his eyes is reserved for a particular time. A time is coming when you shall see him as he is. The Bible says, what manner of love is it that God has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God? It does not yet appear what we should be like. But one thing we know is that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Blessed are the pure in their hearts, for they shall see. You don't want to see your creator. <laughs> I don't just know how somebody can live his life, both in this side of life and in eternity. You don't see God. It will continue to be imagination, figments of imagination to a whole lot of people. Remember the Bible say that word we have come to Mount Zion actually says we are appointed to. We are destined to come, to be, to stay, to live, to dwell is an appointment, just like it is an appointed unto man to die. So there is an appointment in the presence of God where we shall see him. Amen. <clears throat> that is appetizer. Okay, so let's take the main menu. I want to talk to us today about understanding times and seasons. And let me start by asking you a question. Do you pray? Is it not? How do you know what to pray? How? You are praying. How do you know what to pray? Because the Bible says we do not know what we should pray, even as we ought to pray about it. So many a times you can be praying and praying. A good prayer, but not the right prayer. What, when you tell somebody it is six o'clock on Thursday evening, six p.m., what is what are you trying to? What message are you trying to pass across? Hmm? When you tell somebody it is six p.m on Thursday evening. What are you trying to pass across to the person? Eh? What? Time for what? Okay, let me ask you another question. That's good. That's very good. That's excellent. Let me ask you another question. When you say Please, what is the time? When you ask somebody, what is the time? What are you, what is the reason for asking the time? 
What is the reason for asking the time? Because there is something you ought to do. True or false? That's the reason for time and seasons. Uh, what's the time now? He say it's six o'clock. It's time to start praying for service. <laughs> On a Sunday morning, uh, what's the time? Seven. It's time for Westgate Church service to start. Anytime you talk about time, it tells you about what to do. Because the reason for time, why the time was calibrated, is as a result of things to do. So anytime you mention time, oh, I am late. Late to what? To what I am supposed to do, to where I am supposed to be, is always action. There is always a work to do. That's why the time. So anytime you talk about time, there are things to be done. And so God that created the whole world, the whole universe, he created time for the purpose of what we ought to do part time. There are things that God had designed, there are things that God had put in place to be done at a particular time and season. That's the reason for time. And so when it is a particular time to do a particular thing, and you are not doing that particular thing, you are out of what? Alignment. Something goes wrong. And so that is the reason why you can be doing something good, but not something right. I want to tell you something. As we are going to see from the scriptures. You see, everything that you see in this world that have been designed, orchestrated by God to happen at certain time and at certain season. But someone can find himself doing something that is outside of what he's supposed to be doing at that time and in that season. So, in other words, if you want efficiency in your life, you know what is efficiency? When you put in a little and you have so much in return. You put in small, work, you have a lot coming back. If you want effectiveness in your life, if you want productivity, if you want to experience fulfillment, if you want to enjoy life and see good days, you know what you need to do? You have to understand the times and the seasons of events. If you don't, you are going to continue to struggle because you will be out of a life. Have you ever driven, those of you who drive, have you ever driven a vehicle that is not in alignment, that is out of alignment? Have you driven a car like that? You may not be able to have <coughs> driven such a car. Even the one that you drive that is out of alignment, you may not really know this. I have driven, when I say I have driven a car that is out of alignment, believe me. That very car was driving there. If a pregnant woman was inside that car, you would have bought. Because the whole car is shaking. And you can't do more than 60. The car will be vibrating. I've driven that kind of way. I once traveled to Ibado. I think it was last year, yeah. And something happened. I was coming back. While I was driving to Ibado, the car was shaking and all of that. I've done an alignment here in Lagos before I travel. I made that journey. I just did alignment of the car and then I started the journey. On the way, the car was still shaking and vibrating. The wheel, the steering was shaking and it was so uncomfortable. So when I got to Ibadan, 
I finished what I was doing with the school, and then I went to the person that does alignment again to redo the alignment, and that wasted the time up till about 6.30 to 7 o'clock in the night. By the time he was through, he said he was okay and all of that, so I was happy. So the distance is not really my problem. Let the car be in order, then I will, I will go. So I hit the road. Shortly after I entered the express, the whole car, everything was shaking. That journey took me almost five hours from Ibadan to Lagos because I had to slow down. I was doing 30, 40. Even at 30 and 40, he's shaking. And by the time I came into Lagos, it was after 10 to 11 o'clock in the night. The journey I started making by 7. It's just to show you the problem with a life that is outside of, out of alignment, struggle. But do you know that is what a lot of us are facing every day, every week, every month, every year. And we spend so much time fasting, praying, speaking in tongues. But you're outside alignment. You know, when, the, when you say there is full moon, it is because the earth, the moon, has come between the sun and the earth and is in a very perfect alignment. So the sun, the light that is coming from the sun, beams on that moon. And then the moon reflects the full of that light on earth. So when you look at everywhere, it looks as if it is a day time. It's alignment. When you are in alignment, when you have driven, when you drive a car that is in alignment, boom, you enjoy it. When you live a life that is in alignment with time, it's easy. It's easy. So when things become too hard, too difficult, watch the alignment. Go and do alignment. Because God does not design life to be like that. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. You see, he said to everything there is what? To every what? Thing. To how many things? Hello? To how many things? What is everything? What is everything? Everything that happens under the earth, under the heaven. Everything that happens under the sun. There is a time for it to happen. There is a season for it to be. And what it means is that there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. There is absolutely nothing you can do. Your prayer cannot change it. Your fasting cannot change it. It must follow, it must happen that way. To everything there is a season for it to happen and a time to every purpose under heaven. It is the understanding of this that will simplify your life. That is the reason why in Jeremiah chapter 10, 23, Jeremiah 10, 23, he said, O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not where in himself. It is not in man that walketh to do what? There is nothing. You 
you can't change it. You can't go against it, no matter what it is that you do. Give me Proverbs chapter 20, 2024. Man's going are what? Are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own ways? There are so many things that we get ourselves into doing that puts us out of this very timing and the seasons of God. Guess what? When it is time during the rains, when the rains begin to fall, it is time to do what? To go and plant seed in the ground. And there is a time allotted for harvest to come. So you cannot go in the time of harvest and begin to plant seeds. You are turning the hand clock backwards. You are going to put a whole lot of effort. You are going to go out of your way. It's going to cost you a lot of time and resources and energy and everything to make harvest during the dry season. God created time and season and apportioned certain events and actions to take place within the specific coordinates of those times and seasons. There are things that God has desired. Go back to Ecclesiastes. Give me verse 2. He said, verse 2 please, a time to be born and a time to do what? To die. There is a time God designed for you to come here. There is a time God has designed for you to go. A time to plant. And a time to pluck up that which is planted. There is a time and you can't, there's nothing you can do about it. That's why he said it is not within the power of any man to decide. So if you align yourself if you understand the time and the season and then align yourself, you're going to have little effort. You just put in a little and you have the harvest. This brings me to the major the core of the message what we want, God wants to pass across to us. This thing that I have just said applies to you as an individual. It also applies to us as a church. The church must understand the time and the seasons. The church is a very important, the only institution under heaven through which God brings about the accomplishment of his purpose and plans on earth. He does it through the church. There is a reason for the church to be. And the church, the Bible tells us, is the body of who? Of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus is who? The head of the church. And as the head, he is the one that directs the body where to go to. He is the one that gives instruction. He understands the program of God. He knows what the church ought to do at a particular time and a particular season. So if the church does not have such an understanding and you are doing something contrary to what the head is saying, what Jesus is saying, you will be out of alignment. You are going to create problems. Problems. 
So we can spend the rest of our life as a church doing something that God is not interested in. What is not appointed for the church to do. There are times of concentration on a particular thing. There are things that God is doing at a particular point in time and the church ought to know what it is and then align yourself as a church and not to get distracted. You know what? You know, this time and see, if you see what is going on in the world today, if you see what is going on in the nations of, look at your country, Nigeria. It's boiling. All kinds of things are happening. And then the church is, the, the church will follow the bandwagon and all of it. And so the tendency for you to be distracted is so high. So what if you are not careful, what you are going to suppose, what you end up doing is uh, damage control. Things have gone wrong. You just keep on trying to manage it, trying to make a statement and all of that. Why you, have, why you finish making that, another one has happened and then you start talking about it and start condemning it and all of that. By the time you finish again, you are, you are going to start, you know, talking about how to put things in place and all of that so that such a thing will not happen again and all of that. So you get distracted. Is that actually what God wants? At that time to do, is that the season for all those things? What should be the concern of the church in a particular time and season? There have been time and season that God has made emphasis on certain area that God is showing light and throwing light. And so the message, and there are messages you need to preach, you need to talk about, there are emphasis. At a particular time, it's not just to climb the pulpit and open the Bible and begin to talk. You have to discern what the Spirit is, what the heaven is saying. So you re-echo the voice of heaven. And that is when you see the impact. That's where you see the power. That's where you see the glory. That's when you see the anointing. When you are saying what heaven is saying. When a church, when the church is not saying what heaven is saying, it means the church is doing their own bidding. There have been times in the past, prophetic words have come where God was speaking through his prophets and all of that, saying that, that you should give him back his church. They've taken his church away from him. That is to say, the church has started, they are running on their own. They've disconnected from the head and doing something that God never uttered, that God never was interested or involved. That heaven is, they are not even in the program of God. They are not, they don't even understand the program of God in the first place. So, We read 1 Chronicles 12.32. 1 Chronicles 12.32. Read it carefully. I know you know the scripture. Just read it carefully. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had what? understanding of what the times to know what Israel what ought to do the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their commandments this set of men they had an understanding of the times they have understanding of the season. So what it means is that they can discern. They have an understanding of what heaven is saying. And so they tell their brethren what heaven is saying. 
And so that thing that the heaven is saying, they understood it and then they began to do it. Listen, it is one thing for you to know what heaven is saying. It is another thing for you to understand what heaven is saying. There are two different things. I'll give you an example. John the Baptist, he knew about the coming Messiah, true or false. He was even the one, he was part of the prophet that did what? Prophesied about the coming Messiah. And when that Messiah, rather, uh, the prophets in the old, they prophesied about it. He heard about it, he knew it. And when that Messiah came, he identified that Messiah and he confessed that Messiah. He said, behold the lamb of who? That taketh away the sins of the world. He saw it, he prophesied, he spoke it, he confirmed it, but he never understood it. He got confused at a point. He said, Go. He sent his disciples, he said, Go, find her, ask him, Are you the one to come or do we wait for another? He was coming, he didn't have understanding. And that was what took his head. And when his disciples came to Jesus Christ and said, our master John sent us to you to ask you whether you are the one to come or not. Do we wait for another? He said, when you go, tell him the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, and all of that. And after that, he said, blessed is the one that will not take offense. You are not offended in me. Because he was offended. Why was he offended? Because he didn't understand. Yeah, the Messiah was coming. And the Messiah had come. So he thought that the Messiah was going to come and become the physical king that would take over the rule of Israel. He didn't understand it. He had the knowledge, he didn't understand it. So you must know and you must have understand. That's why the Bible prays. The Bible says that God might, you might be filled with the spirit of that God will grant you the knowledge of his word, fill you with the knowledge of his will, with all spiritual wisdom. And because if you don't understand, you will be a problem to that same knowledge that you have. You will be a problem to that same revelation that you have. Look at the wise men. The wise men that came, they saw the star about the birth of Jesus Christ. They followed that star and then they came to her Herod. And told him, we have seen the Messiah and all of that. And Herod said, okay, please, when you finish seeing the Messiah, come back and let me know. They knew about the Messiah. They have come and they saw, they understood the Messiah. Was it not in the night, the angel of the Lord appeared and said, don't go back. If they did not understand it, what they were told. He said, because this man was looking for a way to kill this son. If you go back and tell him he's going to kill that child and abort God's dream. And what did they do? They went from there. And then Herod waited for the wise men to, came, to come back, they didn't come back. So he knew that they have, he had been deceived. So he calculated the time they came and found that it's about two years and above. So he gave an order to kill every child that was born in Israel. Kill them from the beginning to the end. And they went after killing them. Guess what? The Bible says in the book of Matthew concerning that, it said, Rachel was crying uncontrollably because his children were killed and there was no way of getting them back. He said, For it is written, prophesied ahead of time. So, what was said hundreds of years ago started happening. Everything that you see going on in this has been orchestrated. God has a program that He's running.
Look at Joseph. And God warned Joseph in the dream. He said, take this woman, the mother and the child, and go down to Egypt. Because Herod was looking for him to kill him. And he took them to Egypt. What did the Bible say? When they went to Egypt, the Bible said that it might be fulfilled what was said. Out of Egypt do I call my son. <laughs> you need to understand the seasons and the timing and the will of God and the ways of God. If you don't, it's a disjointed life. The church will be living in a disjointed, you will be focusing and concentrating on things that has nothing to do with heaven. Many of us are there. Many of the churches, that is what we are doing. No clue about what heaven is saying. If I ask now, what exactly is the time and the season that we are in right now? What is the heaven saying concerning the church? What should be our focus? What should be the focus of the church? This time and this season that we are in. You know what? Because if you know it and you plunge yourself in doing it, you, your whole body, the Bible says, will be full of light. You will be very efficient. You will be effective. You will be productive. You will be active. You will be fulfilled. You will experience the glory of God. And because you are in alignment with heaven. And so your prayer will catch fire. Those little prayer. When you are praying, I want to, for those of you who have understanding of this, when you understand and you are praying in line with the will of God, you see how the prayer works. You see the, how the prayer comes out. You see what happens inside of you. Even the message you are preaching. If you are saying what heaven says, he's saying, you will know, you will know that there is another being there is something else, not just you, that is speaking. The question is now, how may we know what is heaven saying in this time and in this season? Because if I know it, Will follow it. Okay, give me Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. Ephesians 5 15. See then that you walk circumspectly. In other words, see that you live your life. That is, you walk, you live your life not as fools, but as what? Wise. Because when you are out of alignment, you live like a fool. But in that your thing, that thing that you are doing, you think you are breaking forth and breaking through. You think you are achieving something and all of that, but the Bible knows, God knows that you are out of alignment. And so when you are out of alignment, it means that you are a fool. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fool, but as what? Wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. We need to redeem the time. We need to walk wisely. We need to live wisely. How can we live wisely? Seventeen. Wherefore, be ye not what? 
unwise, but doing what? You need to understand the time. You need to understand the season that we are in. And so that you can live a wise life. So that you can live wisely. So that you can be more efficient and more productive and more effective and all of that. Anything outside of it. The struggle continues. This is the reason you fast, you pray, and you are praying the wrong thing. It's not that what you are praying is bad, is sin, or is the wrong thing. It is good, but it's not right. Let me show you, there are two ways you find out the times and the seasons. There are two ways you can find, you can discern the times and the season, both in your life and also in the life of the church. Because I know what the time and the season that we are in. And I know what the church is supposed to be doing. And that is why I am saying this to you. And that is why I am here to tell you. So for those who want to line up, you line up. Those who don't want to line up, you continue pursuing your own agenda. Period. There are two ways. We understand the times and the season. The first, Amos, in chapter 3, in verse 7. He says, Surely the Lord God will do how many things? But he does what? He revealed his secret unto his the prophets. Do we still have prophets in our time? I told you the key to knowing the secret, the depths of God, the wisdom of God, the mind of God. I told you one of the things you must possess if you don't have it, you can't assess the secrets. You can't assess the deep things of God. He said that he will reveal his secrets to his prophets. Do we have prophets today who are prophets? You know what we call prophets today? And they tell you they are prophets. I can see... Someone is tied, somebody that tied your womb. They call them seers and all that. I can see evil spirit and all of that. He said, This is a prophet that shut up your mouth. You are not. And that is what we have everywhere. A prophet is a man that discerns the mind of God and he says, God says the Lord, this is what God wants to do. This is what God is saying in the time that we are in. They bring the mind of God to bear and they tell the church, they tell the people, this is what God is saying. This is what God wants to do. And you get doing it and you see the result. Go and check the prophets. What do we have today? What are we hearing today? In the year 2023, there is going to be some earthquakes. There will be promotions. If you want to tell people, make them happy and all, tell them, don't say God is saying. You are not a prophet. I told you in Psalm 25 verse 14, he said, the secrets 
of the Lord that he tells his servant. He can only reveal them to those who fear him. If you don't have the fear of God, you won't have access to his secrets. And the fear of God, the Bible tells us, is to depart from iniquity. Your hands must be clean. This God that you are following, you are talking about, is clean, is pure. God is holy. And you must come here. He said, they that appear before me, you must come with clean hands because I am pure. God is righteous. You can't be doing this and say you are a prophet. He won't hear. You won't hear nothing. So in order to cover yourself and your prestige and all of that, you come and tell people cock and boot stories. That's why the church is in dark. That's why there is no that is a prophet that gives direction to the church. Which of them do we have today? The prophet is a representative of God. The prophet says, thus says the Lord, so so and so time, and so so and so season, is what I'm going to do. This is the error. God said to me to tell the church, this is the error of this and that and that. And what he says comes to pass. And when you begin to do, you will see heaven opens. You know, one of the first, we just stand behind the pulpit. You see, you see, preacher, we stand behind the pulpit. We are just talking. Empty words. No, we are not coming. You think, you think, hello, you think what heaven is saying is that you shall prosper, you shall break through, you shall break in, you shall break to the right and to the left. Is that what heaven is saying? There is a program, there is an agenda of heaven. God is a serious minded God. That's why he said, at the fullness of, give me, give me Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 please. Give me Galatians chapter 4. See what he about. He said, when the fullness of the time was come, God knows what he's doing part time. When this fullness of time came, you see the prophet, they began to herald about the birth of Jesus, about the coming Messiah. Everybody saying, God put it in the mouth of so many people. They begin to say it. So when you go to the north, you hear what somebody, the, the preacher is saying. You go to the south, you see the same thing being re-echoed. You go to the west, you see the same You hear the same thing from the west and the east. But today, In, when you come to, you must hear how you are going to prosper. You must hear how God will deliver you. You must hear how God will see you through. You must hear how God will help you. If you don't hear that, that is not, the message has not started. The children of Issachar, they have understanding of the times. And so they were able to instruct the rest of the children of Israel about what they ought to do so they will be they were doing the right thing but when the fullness of the time was come God sent forth his son made of a woman under the law when the fullness of time came God sent him Give me Colossians 1 9. You know that Colossians that we read, we recite. <clears throat> he said, For this cause, I want you to watch. Since the day we heard it, we do not stop from praying for you, and we desire, our heart desire while we pray, is that you might be filled with what? The knowledge of his will, what is the will of God for the time and for this season, so that you have understanding. That's what you know. The prayer that Isaka, it is that prayer that he's praying here, so that you have understanding of the time and the season. 
He says so that cease not to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will, not wisdom and what? Not only that you know, but you have an understanding of what God wants you to do. Number three, and then you apply your heart to it. You start doing it. Wisdom means applied knowledge. Knowledge that you have and you put it into practice. There are a lot of people here today that knows or they hear that cigarette smoking is dangerous to what? To health. And those who smoke it are liable to die young. It's written on the... I used to smoke. But when in those days when I used to smoke, it, it wasn't written there anyway. So I didn't know. But I've just, I've, uh, now, that's where before I got born again, because some people will now say, eh, hey, Pastor, so you smoke. Hey, so even as a pastor, you are smoking. I wasn't smoking. It was when I, before I got saved. Did you hear me? Did you hear this one? They know that cigarette smoking is dangerous to health, and those who smoke are liable to die young. Do they stop smoking? What it means is that they have the knowledge, okay? They do not have understanding. Understanding is lacking. That's why they were not able to do it. That's why they are not able to stop it. Do you know why people still commit adultery? They know that adultery, God is saying you should not commit adultery. But understanding why and how is lacking. And so that is why they continue in it. Because when you know that this thing that you are committing, that is going to destroy you, destroy your generation, destroy everything around you and everything that you have built, it might not happen today, it might not happen tomorrow, but you have left desolation to your generation. When you understand it, you will run away from it. No one who will have this understanding will continue to do the same thing. There is an adage in our play that says, it's only a tree that hears that he's going to be cut down and still stood. It's understanding that is lacking. That's why anywhere you pray, the prayer is a, a prayer of wisdom. It goes with wisdom, knowledge, and under the three. Uh, they are twins. Is it twin or triplets? You can't separate the three. You say, for this cause, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, to desire and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Give me verse 10. When you, are, when you have understanding of God's will, you know it and you have the understanding and then you start doing it. What happens next? He said that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto what? Pleasing. What, if, you want, if you want to walk worthy, walk in accordance to your calling and you want to please God and do the things that are pleasing to God and God will say, well done, good and faithful servant and all of that. You know what you need to do? You are going to find out what is the will of God and start doing it. That's how you please God. That's what he's saying here. That is so that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. And then that is how you'll be fruitful. Because you are doing exactly what heaven says. So your life is productive. Your life is efficient. Your life is effective. Your life is productive and fulfilling. That is what, so that you may be fruitful in every good work. And then you will continue to grow in the knowledge. So to whom more is given more, the more you do, the more God will open up. Because you are living in line with his will. You are doing what he calls you to do. You are saying what he says you should do and all of that. Everything begins to add up. Your life will begin to beam light, full light. The key to this is finding the will of God. The time and the season. Knowing what it is that God is saying now, the emphasis, the kind of message you are going to be praying, preaching, the kind of prayer you are going to be praying. 
not all kinds of prayer. Not anything that we, in the name of message you preach. So the question now is, like I said, God brings the counsel, his counsel to bear. What he wants to do, he speaks through his what? Prophets. But the problem is that the prophets are The prophets are deaf. The prophets are blind. They can't see. I know, are we prophets? Yes, generally there is a general prophet. We are all prophets. But there is something about the office of a prophet. A prophet stands in that office. It's an office. I say prophet is an office. Just like pastor is an office, an evangelist is an, of, is an office, and there is something that is designated to that office to do. God is not stupid. He knows the reason why he apportioned prophets. That's why he said he gave some apostles, some prophets, prophets to do what? Because God will not do anything until he revealed that secret through his servant. The prophet. The prophets. There are prophets and there are the prophets. Everybody, anybody that sees, he sees demons in the, or he sees an angel, he says he's a prophet. And they are confusing. And that's why you see people jumping from one place to they say they are, uh, is this one on our fools? Does he see? See what? Vision. See vision for me. And all. As if to say, see vision is a, is, a, is a kick starter. You just carry the key, put it inside the ignition, and turn it, it starts. God reveals everything that he wants to do. He first tells the prophets. And then the prophet tells the church. And then the church, there is order. There is orderliness. Study God. Though. Study the kingdom. It's not anything goes. Because you feel frustrated in your business and all of that, then you climb up you say you want to become, become a pastor. Out of frustration. And you come and be telling people, you know what is called that? You know, you know many of the messages, you know what we preach? You know that drama I show you? You know that birds, they, what do they call that words, that white birds? What's the name of the bird? The name is not Chekeleke. But they call it Chekeleke. And when you see them flying, you say, ah, Chekeleke Nyembo, Chaki Welo, Chekeleke Nyembo. That is Chekeleke, give me white finger and take the black, black one off my hand. And you'll be saying it. And then when they have finally disappeared into the theater, you know, talk, hey, see, 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 my own is white. What is that one? And they believe it, and that is, that's the kind of thing that they do on the pulpit here, telling people. That's why we are raising monsters in the name of Christian. I will have to tell you the truth. This is what is happening, including from here. We can't raise men who are, the Bible says, that we might attain unto the stature and the fullness of Christ. Is that what we are preaching? Is that what we are raising? God will meet your needs in Jesus' name. Amen. God will prosper you in Jesus' name. Amen. I break your whatever and set you free in Jesus' name. Amen. See, you see all this. Thing? They are just you see all this, you know what it is. You are going to, you are going to 
the, your destination. And there are hindrances here and there. And all these messages and all of is to remove those hindrances so that you can get to the destination. There is a destination. Do we even know what that destination is? Do you know what the journey that God is taking us to? You know the danger of not understanding the time and the season. Just look at the look at the children of Israel in the wilderness. That is exactly the church. It's a type and shadow. There is nothing that is going on today in the body of Christ that has not happened. If you just want to know the time and the season and how God designed everything, go and check, read about the children of Israel from the time they left Egypt till they get to the promised land. That, that promised land is heaven today. That the children of Israel is the natural Israel. The Bible talks about the spiritual Israel. In the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 7, the Bible talks about the church in the wilderness. At a particular time, when they camp at a particular place, they will settle there for a time, for a season, through or false. And then it will come to a time when they are about to move. And then the trumpet will sound. You give them the first um, uh, notice and give them the second, uh, the third sound of the trumpet. Everybody is meant to move. If there are people, do you remember, do you know that there are people who stayed back, who did not move? What happened? The wild beast, they came, they destroyed them. And that is the end. And then they will move again. And when the time comes for, for them to move, that God says, you should now move and all of that. And they will sound the trumpet again and all of that. And there will be some who will stay back because they are used to that place. Because they are not, they don't just want to go. They want to run their own life and do it. You know what happened? The beast in the land, they will come after them. I don't have the time to go through all that and destroy them. out of alignment. So God tells us about the time and the season through his prophets. The second way God does it is through the revelation in his word, in his word, in the Bible. Children of Issachar who have understanding of time and season. Give me Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, did what? Understood by books. The number of the years we have of the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in desolations of Jerusalem. It was through the studying of the word he found that where it is written in the word. Everything that God said that he was going to do, he has given those words to his prophet and they put it down in the holy scriptures. So as you read and you study, you come across, the Holy Spirit will lead you now to that place. And when you are reading it, he shines the light. He makes that impression in your heart. He concentrates your eyes and everything. It comes alive. And even when you are praying, it leads you to that particular scripture. You read it, you say, oh my, because you have understanding of what is going on. That is how it come about. Through the studying of the word, through the writings of the holy prophets. Daniel, while he was studying, what about Peter? In Acts of Apostles chapter, seven, uh, chapter 2 verse 17. On the day of the Pentecost. It was because he saw it was written. He was reading the book of Joel. He read it. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said the Lord. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And then verse 18. Give me verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by who? So he read the prophet Joel. He saw it there. So he was waiting for it. 
That was why they stayed in that upper room. They were praying. They had the knowledge. You see, you remember, 500 people were told to go to the upper room and stay. They heard it. They know. 380 did not have understanding. So they didn't do. They didn't obey. So they left. Those who obeyed, 120 was because they have this understanding. The Bible says concerning Daniel, he understood by books, by studying the word of God. So as you study, as you are studying, as you are, so the Bible is not The Bible says it does two things in you, this Bible. The Bible says that the word of God is a lamp unto your, unto your what? Your feet, first, unto your feet. And is a light unto your path. Lamp unto your feet. You walk with your feet, your lifestyle. It directs you, it shows you what to do and what not to do, how to live your life and all of that. It guides you through the word of God and all of that. That is one thing that the word of God does. But it's also a light onto your path. Your path is your destination, where you are going to. It shows you the mind of God, the program of God. The things that God is doing, the things that God has done, the things that God wants to do. It shows you, it reveals to you through his word. So as we study, we understood what God is saying. And so we begin to do it. And so when you hear people who tells you, forget that by this one, it doesn't matter. Tell those people that it is not true, that it matters. That they are not saying the truth. They are deceiving you. They are lying to you. Is it that they are ignorant? Or that they know and they just want to camouflage and make, make, make themselves look so spectacular? I've read for you Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things, they belong to God. But the ones that are revealed... They belong to us, the sons of men, so that we may do what? But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the world, the one that are revealed, so that we can do them. Now the question is, where is the church today? What is the church supposed to be doing now? I told you about time and season. That anytime you mention time, when you say oh, it is 8 o'clock, oh, 8 o'clock means it is time for us to go home. The service is supposed to end. Then we go. So anytime you mention time, there is something to do. Time reminds you about what to do. So what is the time now for the church? For those who care, if you don't care, you see church, you know what the church is? Church is like a very big train. Train is rolling, is moving. If you enter, it will carry you. If you don't enter, it will continue. It's not going to wait for you. Have you heard that train has started moving and then uh, the Uzo, Pastor or didn't come on time, and because he's a pastor, and he said, "A pastor is around. Tell the train to stop, and then the train will stop, or maybe aeroplane. He has already taken off, and then uh, Pastor John he said, because I'm a barrister and a pastor in the church and all of that, you need to stop, and then the plane will reverse and come back. That's what the church is like." You agree, you don't agree, 
page. Don't just move it. What my 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 only desire, you see, that is why I cannot be I can't be swayed by any. You can't intimidate me with your prophecy, with your visions, with your dreams, with your revelations, with whatever it is. What I am interested in, I want to know what God is saying. And what God is saying, I apply myself to it. Every other thing will begin to line up. The question now is, so where is the church now? What is the church supposed to be doing? I will tell you because I know. Isaiah chapter 60. You know where the, the season, where the church is now? The church is in Isaiah 60. It has been there. It's not today. It's a season. It's a season. It's a rise shine from the light is come and the glory of God is risen upon thee. Verse 2. He said, For behold, there is darkness, it shall cover the earth. And there is going to come in, there is gross darkness is on the people. He said, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. The church has gotten distracted long ago as a result of the happenings, as a result of a whole lot of things deviated saying things, minding things that we are not supposed to mind, getting ourselves involved in what we are not supposed to get ourselves to. Pursuing shadows. The church is an institution ordained by God, brought on earth. It's a kingdom. For a purpose, there is something that we are mindful of. Heaven is speaking. Heaven is talking about it. Heaven wants us to do. There is an emphasis now. Any other thing you are saying outside of it, you are out of order. And anybody that is around you that is saying another thing and all of that, let that person, tell that person is out of order. It is not non-alignment. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people for the Lord. He said, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Verse 3. And the Gentiles, these Gentiles you are pursuing, you want to join them, you want to follow them, you want to be part of them and whatever it is that they are doing. As a church, no! You are not supposed to go to them. They are supposed to come to you. If you do the right thing, that's why I heard somebody said that the church now needs to employ psychology. Is it psychologists or psychiatrists or whatever? I don't know what it is. You know, I just prayed, God help me to guide my to control myself. Because I wanted to abuse the hell out of him. It's not true. And guess what? These are the high and mighty intellectual. He read wide, far and wide. Has a dossier, resume. Is it resume? I'll be resume. Very big. Intimidating by the time they finish the resume. is a book, is an encyclopedia. Look at what he said. Tell me any man that has ever come to Jesus Christ and he said, go and call the psychologist or go and call the psychiatrist. Let them deal, deal with this guy. The Bible says, he healed all. He said, the works that I do, what happens? You will do the same work and greater works. What is happening? Out of alignment, you can't do it. So you are looking for alternative elsewhere. You're looking for alternative.
get me somebody who is, I am not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist. Bring the one that is mad. Bring the one that is obsessed. Bring the one that is into drugs and all of that. He have a, bring him. Just bring him. If you are doubting me, you, even those of you who are there, bring one. Send one. Because wisdom is justified of our children. When you see evidence, you can't doubt again. I am not a psychologist, I am not a psychiatrist, and all of that, but bring one for me. Bring one to me. And give me one week, two weeks. I will clean that person up by the word of God. And the gentle And you shall you shall run to the brightness of the of the gent the light of the Gentiles, and their kings. You will be running to their kings. Eh? Eh? But what? Gentiles shall come to who? And kings shall go to who? Is that what the word of God says? Is that what he says? You know what will make it happen? Is found in verse 4. Look at verse 4. Lift up your eyes round about. And see. Because we are blind. Lift up your heads. Look. of this chaos, in the midst of this turbulence, in the midst of darkness, in the midst of gross darkness, in the midst of this confusion, that is when God is moving. Don't be lured or carried away by the darkness and the tempest and all of that. Look, he said, look, lift up your eyes because you're bent. He said, lift it up. Look, round about to you. See them. How are they going to come to you? Give me John chapter 4 verse 36. John 4 36. And he thirty five, thirty five, please. Say not ye there are what? Four months and then come at harvest. No, 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 no. Behold, I say unto you, do what? Do what? Lift up your eyes and look where? On the feet. That is what he's saying in Isaiah. Lift up your eyes. Look on the fields. For every Lift up the veil and look for the field. And look on the field. For they are white already for harvest. When you see the heart of men are failing them, when you see fear, when you see uncertainties, when you see people going down and all kinds of things are happening, deep inside them they are crying for help. And the only thing that can save them is Jesus Christ. And somebody has to do it. If we are busy doing any other thing, you are joining political party, you are discussing politics and discussing who, I don't even want, they are not worthy of me mentioning their names. They don't deserve me mentioning their names here. It's an insult. If we are discussing, when you see brethren, they sit together, they are talking, is this thing that should be talking about? It's about the souls. It's about the field. It's about souls to win. It's about discipleship. It's about how to disciple them. He said, go make disciples of all nations. He said, go preach the gospel. He said, this is the time. Nothing else that matters. 
this is the one and the only thing that church is focused on. I'll show you what happened. The power to make it happen is available. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And then you can go. The power of the Holy Spirit. That's why they waited at Pentecost until the Holy Spirit showed up. All of a sudden, like a mighty rushing wind, the house where they were, they are filled with the presence of God. The glory, the Holy Ghost is the glory of God. The Holy Ghost, that is the glory of God is the Holy Ghost. Is the Holy God that made God to be everywhere at any point. No other place. Satan can never be anywhere. All the places that he doesn't have it. It's a lie. He can only go from one place to another place. To one place. He can't be here and be there and be there and be there. He doesn't have it. He's the Holy Ghost. That's what makes God God. Omnipresent. Omnipresent. He's everywhere. But the Holy Spirit. That's the glory of God. And when that glory showed up, Boldness came. Power. Give me Mark chapter 16 verse 20. Is it 20 or 18? Mark 16. Mark 16, 20. They shall, I say 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord doing what? Walking with them and confirming the words with what? Signs and wonders. This is a project. It is not a one-off thing. It is not a one-off. It is the occupation of the church. In all of this, you must be involved. There are three angles to this assignment. There are three. Hello. Hello. Are you not saying hi? I say hello. If you are not involved in any of these three, you are out of alignment. I am telling you, I want to say it again. Do I repeat myself? If you are not involved in any of these three, you are out of alignment. If you have ever driven a car that is out of alignment, you will understand what I'm saying. If you have ever suffered from one terrible sickness and all of that, that incapacitated you, you will understand what I'm saying. Sickness is out of alignment. It means something is not right in your body. That's sickness. It means your body is not in alignment. If you are not and parcel of evangelism, of soul winning. If you are not involved in it, whether as a person, your church and all of that, and you are just you are just recycling the people that you have around you and all of that, you are out of alignment. Both as an individual and as a pastor and as a church, you are out of alignment. I don't care what it is that you are doing. Number two, if you are not involved in this, you must be involved in discipleship. At least, I'm not discipleship with mouth. You are passion. You are crying. Your prayer is along this line. Oh God, that they may be rooted and grounded. My little children, in whom I travel again until Christ is forming them. May Jesus Christ be forming them. May they be rooted and grounded. This is your prayer. You are part of it. You are in alignment. Oh Lord, the reign of your spirit, because you said in the last days, you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh. And many will come 
to the brightness of your rising. Send the rain again, outpouring of your spirit. We need the great, we need all that for the soul. He said, ask ye for the souls of the hidden, I will give them to you. Even the utmost part of the earth for your heritage. This is your prayer. This is your heart. You are committed to it. When you pray a prayer like this, you see the power. You see heaven open. You will see signs and wonders. You will see miracles. Not the one you finish praying, you go and carry your, you go up to your home and stay and be sleepy and then mind your business. Lord, who shall go for us? Who shall I send? Who shall go for us? Lord, here am I. Send them. God, that is what we do. That's what we pray. Here am I, Lord. Send them. I'm not available. I have some issues. I have some commitments. My business and my job and my work and my vision will not permit me, will not allow me. Is it that you are in the field there? Eh? Winning that soul. It's not the one that you go and finish, you come back and uh, you do all those activities. At the end of the day, there is nothing. You can't show him. That's not what we are. You do whatever you're doing with purpose. Allow God to direct you, to lead you. Pray that he open the door by himself so that you can go. Paul was praying. He said that God will give us an open door that the gospel may be preached. It doesn't matter. You see, eh? when you have understanding of the time and the season and you plug yourself, even faith comes naturally. Faith, you, the struggle for faith ends because you... Have you ever seen a river that is flowing this way, down this way? You pick up a piece of paper, you throw it inside that river. What happens? You see it carrying it down, down the street. That's what happens when you are in alignment. The wave of the spirit carries you. Everything about your life changes. How many have I said? The third one. You must pray it. Paul planted. Apollos does what? So if you're praying, you must understand what you are praying. Not just coming to pray for the sake of I hear when you pray, you are praying this way, praying that way, praying. You must be involved in any of these three. Actively, passionately. I'm talking as a church. You. Any other thing that you are doing outside of this, you are wasting your time. You are out of alignment. I don't care what it is that you are doing. You know what he said in the book of Nehemiah when they were rebuilding the temple? He said, with one hand, can you find it for me? With one hand, he holds his sword and the other one, they walk. Find it for me, Nehemiah, I think Nehemiah 4 or so. With one hand, they held the sword, and with the other, they walk. So it's not that you are holding the sword. I'm, I'm doing cleaning in the church. Nehemiah, Nehemiah 4, 17, yes, thank you, God bless you. They which builded on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that led it, every one. How many? With one of his hands wrought what? And with the other hand held what? What does he say? Uh, uh, we are we are cleaning the church. Uh, we are in choir. 
That's your ministry. That's your calling. You're out of alignment. Anything at all you like. You do. That is why. You see, I said it before. I said in the beginning, if you want to see, enjoy life and see good days, if you want to see efficiency in your life, if you want to see effectiveness in your life, if you want to see fruitfulness in your if you want to see fulfillment in your life, if you want to enjoy life, if you want to enjoy heaven on earth, get involved. And when I'm saying involved, you is not is not a one of the is not something that you come today, tomorrow you go. You must be in find the one that your heart is. That is why he said in that Ephesians 5, 15, he said, do not walk circumspectly, not as unwise or fool, but as wise. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, verse 16. He says, redeeming the time because the days are evil, darkness upon darkness and gross darkness. Verse 17, he said, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of God is. If you want to walk wisely, these are the three practical things you must do. Anything short of this, I want to say it again, you are out of alignment. Let me warn you. There are times and seasons. A time to do this, a time to do that I've read for you in Ecclesiastes. If you are out of alignment, when the evil, the prince of darkness shows up, because he showed up at any point in time in your life, it happened to Jesus, it happened to Elijah, it happened to Elisha, it happened to David, it happened to Abraham, it happened to every, it happened to Apostle Paul, it happened to all of them. When that time comes, what will keep you? When you hear David say, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I am not afraid because I know you are with me. Hey, it's not empty confession. Because the man was a warrior. He was an active. He was a king. He was doing his bidding. He was doing the assignment that God. So I am not afraid. So when I tell you that I am not afraid of any man, you see, any mortal man, I'm not afraid, I'm not scared. One bit, it doesn't exist in my diary. It doesn't exist in my dictionary. You know why? You know why? Because I found out that if I connect myself to any of this or to this tree as a pastor, this is what I am commissioned to do and I stay on it. You can't touch me. Except my time has come. They told Jesus Christ and said the Herod was, is it not Herod? Was looking for your head. He said, go tell that fox. Cast out devil. I hear the sick. On the day that I will perfect it. You can't touch me. At his trial, the Herod asked him, is it Herod again? Or a pilot? Pilate asked him, can't you, don't you know that? He said, hey, hold it there. You don't have that power, except it is given to you by my father. I have the power to lay down my life. I have the power to lay. You can't do not. Shut up! Who gave you that? Nobody can give you that power. They say anyone who finds himself in this, any of this, is not praying. Praying are right. Oh. It's not disciple. It's not this thing that we say you are in disciple. Where are you in discipleship and all? Is to 
when you see men that you are, you are concerned and all of that, have they been rooted? Are they grounded? Have they taken the proper nourishment, spiritual nourishment that they ought to take at this particular time? What is going on and all? We need to do something. You get on your knees, you pray that they might be filled with the knowledge of your way, Lord. With all wisdom and spiritual understanding, so that they can walk worthy of it, so that they can do the things that are pleasing in your sight. It's your prayer. Fill them with the knowledge of your will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Grant them the wisdom, grant them revelation in the knowledge, so that they may know the hope to which you have called them, so that they will know the riches of your glorious inheritance in them, so that they may know the exceeding greatness of your power that is at work in them, and all of that, and so on and so forth. There are so many of them. Discipleship. These are your concentration. These are your passion. As you are bringing the souls, someone is receiving them, he is training them, he is educating them on the word of God, on the spiritual thing, and all of that. Hey, nothing in the, you are in short. You know, you know what they call divine immunity. You are in short. Nothing will touch you. Nothing will happen to you until you are done with your assignment. And God tells you, if God be God, let God be God. If God is no God, then let's forget about it. That's my own understanding. That's my own stand. If God is God, let God be God. Let's stand by the word of God and nothing else. If God has said it, who can unsay what God has said? Who can pro prophesy but the word of God? Let's stop hearing cock and bull stories. I see vision, I have this, I see this, I do this, I do that. At the end of the day, you are neither here nor there. There are many of us here. Nothing. I want to say you are out of alignment if you are not involved actively in any of these things. Because this is how your life. Give me John 4 36. John 4 36. And he that repeat does what? He that repeat does what? Who pays? <laughs> Who pays? So, what do you do? If you want to be paid by God, what do you do? You reap. You go into the field, is it not? You don't want to go into the field, you say, and be hanging around and use some whatever cloak and cover yourself and pretend to be, okay, stay. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto what? Life eternal. See what you are doing. Not only that you are going to receive wages to here on earth, on that other side you are going to receive wages. You are going to receive eternal life and you are going to reign with him. You are going, my God, oh my God. What? Give me John, John 15, 16. Let me show you another one. <laughs> you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth what? Fruit. And that your fruit may do what? Should remain. And that your fruit should do what? And that your fruit should do what? What is, what will make them remain? Discipleship. And then when they remain, what happens? He said that whatsoever you shall ask of, what is whatsoever? What is whatsoever? Do you have anything to ask God? Do you have anything to ask him? Plenty. Then do this. And let us see. Romans 10, 15. 
And how shall they preach except they be sent? And as it is written, how what beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. If you want a better life, if you want to see good life, if you want to see good days, long life, get involved. Get involved. Someone, Paul say, I, Paul, First Corinthians 3, he say, I, Paul, have done the planting. Apollos does the watering. Somebody has to do the planting of the seed, the word of God, the evangelism, the soul winning, and all of that. Someone has to do the watering, the praying, division of labor. We don't know that the kingdom of God is so organized and so well knit together. And when you understand the functionality, when you understand the structure, the way God has designed, and that is why I take uh, uh, painstakingly, is it painstakingly or stake-pakingly, whatever you call it, and going through this and reeling them out one by one so that it will not be my idea and what I am telling you is the emphasis the Holy Ghost is talking about. If you are doubting me and you can hear from God, I want you to go and pray and ask God. Know that if you believe that you hear from God, if you believe truly that you hear from God, go and ask him. Go bring the souls into the kingdom. You know, you know, you know, we are want to buy the house, this building, and all of that. You know, and then we are going to, you know, your whole, the, the danger, your whole attention and everything is going to be towards, we are buying building, we are building, we are doing that. So, you lose focus. I would rather remain a tenant for life and do the bidding of God than to pursue to be a landlord and lose sight or focus on what God calls it. But one thing that I know is that if you do the bidding of every other thing, even when you are not praying about it, it will come. Is that not why he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Did he say you should be praying for these, those things? The answer is no. I told you what happened to me some time ago. My discussion with my wife about was it not about two years ago or there about when I woke up one morning because my 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 body and all of I woke up every day a whole a full fledged man friend I look at my age I look at my children I look at everything I said who swear for me and that this is my age and stage and all of that I'm living with my family in my mother-in-law's house. For almost three years in this Lagos. Nobody who had ever wanted to come and see my wife that came to that house. If they want to see my wife, my wife will tell you that she's not around. He said, you already, one of them, one, somebody called, he said, I'm already on the way. He said, I'm not in town. I'm not in Lagos. Do you know? Because he feels funny. I'm with my husband. I'm living in my mother's house. And somebody is coming. And I'm still going there. You can see that kind of whatever. He's, he gave me sleepless nights. I have prayed all kinds of prayer that I know to pray. You think he's speaking in tongues? They are, when you speak in, speak in tongues, speak the right tongues. One night I just woke up, I prayed. When I finished praying, I didn't know what else to do. I fell asleep. I think I, yeah, I fell asleep. Early in the morning around six o'clock. When I, I, it was as clear as anything. Is, you know, my wife would say it's a text message. It was, it dropped in my, it was a text message. It was, there was no ambiguity. He says, seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these will be added. 
I woke up that morning, I called my wife, I said, this is what God has said to us to do. Thank God for a godly woman. From that day, we joined our heart together, we concentrated and began. Two weeks later, like home video, we got the house. How the money came about and all of that, close to how many, about five, six million naira and all, from nowhere. And we continue. Today we have, I'm no longer a tenant, I'm not a landlord. Anybody that annoys me, I'll sack you and clear from my people. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. And there are many more to come. You know, I don't want to talk about it. There are other ones along the line. If I say it now, you blow your mind. Something greater than the one that we have. The house that we have. Something greater, bigger than that. The problem is not God. Say the problem is not with God. You are not saying it. I say, say the problem is not with God. So, who is the problem? Who is the problem? You don't want to say you are the problem. Okay. Don't worry. You are not the problem. God is the problem. Or the church is the problem. Or the pastor is your problem. You know, my job, my duty is to tell you the truth. Someone was talking to me yesterday, the yesterday or the day before yesterday. He said there is one man across the street. When they went for evangelism, he said, which church? He said, it's an uh, okra. He said, no, I don't like your pastor. He said, I don't like him. He said, she was surprised. He said, what happened? I don't like the way he talks, the way he preaches. Because he preaches. You must be saved or else. <laughs> I say I will not stop. Oh, no apologies. You see these three things. That's why, that's this kind of thing that I say that he doesn't like. That's why he doesn't like me. If you are not in any of this, you are out of alignment. Your life will not find a bearing. Continue you fast. If you like, eh, pray 25 hours in a day in tongues. When you finish, you are back to square one. Look at your life. The evidence is your life. David said, I was young. Now I am old. I am yet to see the righteous forsaken. No, he said, beg for bread. Hello, now that you know what is the will of God, what is the season and the time that we are in, what is the practical step, the practical, if you leave this place now and get home, what is the next thing you are going to do? I will tell you what it is. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. They are thought of peace and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. That's where we always read and stop. In verse 12, he says, Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. That was exactly what Daniel did. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. In verse 3, the Bible said, And Daniel began to seek the face of God. You began to pray that thing. If you know the time and the season, you begin to pray it. When you begin to pray it, your system, your life, and your heart, and your desire, and everything begin to line up. Because you are praying the right kind of prayer. Romans chapter 8 verse 26 says, For we do not know what we should pray. Like what the Holy Spirit helped, helped our infirmity, for we know not what we should pray for, 
as we ought to, because we don't know the mind of God. He said, for we don't know what we should pray as we ought to, but the Spirit, he said, maketh intercession for us with groaning, which cannot be altered. Verse 27. He said, and he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is what? The mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. What is the will of God? What is the mind of God? What is God saying now? That's what I'm bringing to you. I told you there are two ways you find out. One is the Holy Spirit reveals to you through the prophets, and he tells you about the time and the season that we are in. And then the church will unite and begin to do it. Another way you find that is through the scriptures. I showed you about Daniel and a whole lot of other people. How they found out the mind of God, what God is saying. And then they plunged themselves and began to do it. And the rest was history. So when we begin to do this, everything about you want a wife, you will get it. You want a husband, you will get it. You want this one, you get it. You want a breakthrough. You see, that is how the breakthrough and the breaking and break up and break whatever, all those breaks, that's how they come. Without your effort. But when you leave this and you concentrate, your mind is, uh, how am I going to survive? How am I going to succeed? How am I going to get it? How am I going to pay the rent? How am I going to pay the bills? If that is what preoccupies your mind, you are finished though. Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word gives light. It is a lamp unto our feet. It is a light unto our path. We have heard you spoke to us today, Lord, expressly. The Bible says the, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in these last days, in this time, and in this season that we are in, you bring forth your word to us, opening our eyes and understanding to know what is the mind of the Father, what the whole church ought to do, just like you said concerning the children of Issachar, a part of the tribe of Judah, uh, the tribe in Israel, they know and they have understanding of the times. They have understanding of the seasons. And so they know what Israel, the church, ought to do. And everyone was at their command. In other words, they were doing that which they were told to do. As we come to the communion table today, Lord, please, we pray, help us. Let us not be the forgetful hearers. But men who hear and understand and put into practice that which we hear and understand. And so, we will bring joy to your heart and bring glory and honor to your name. And we know that your power and authority and the wisdom is made available at our disposal. And the resources to carry this job, you are the one. The provision goes with the vision. As long as we continue to pursue that vision, we are assured of the provision of everything. Thank you, Heavenly Father. As we eat, as we drink, we remember the price that Jesus Christ paid. That we might focus to achieve the purpose for which he died and rose again from the dead. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray.